Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, we're going to show you the Rode PodMic. The Rode PodMic is marketed as being a studio quality, broadcast, dynamic microphone that is designed for speech applications like YouTube videos like this one or like podcasts or video conferencing. For the purposes of this video, we have the gain set on our Solid State Logic SSL2 Plus audio interface. The gain is set at 9 out of 10, and when we publish this video, we will normalize the audio to be minus 23 luffs. Now, in this video, we're going to also compare it to a similar price microphone and the microphone that sets the standard for this type of broadcast quality dynamic microphone. We have a whole bunch of different tests that we're going to run, but first let's talk about price. This microphone is listed at $100 US right now, but obviously the price will go up and down over time, so please be sure to check out the links in the description below for the current pricing and specs of this microphone. Next, let's talk about what you get when you buy the microphone. When you buy this microphone, you'll get a box like this, when you open it up inside, you will find this microphone, the Rode Pod Mic, and a getting started guide. Now, in terms of specs for this microphone, it does have an XLR connector. It's a dynamic microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has an impedance of 32 ohms, a sensitivity of minus 57 dB, a weight of two pounds or approximately one kilogram. So far I've been standing about a fist away from the microphone, but now let's try out the proximity effect. This is what the proximity effect sounds like. It's a good time to tell a joke when you get inside the proximity effect of the Rode Pod mic. Have I ever told you the story about my uncle? He has the heart of a lion and a lifetime ban from the zoo. Now we're back to being about a fist away from the microphone and say you want this microphone out of the shot, now we're gonna have the microphone two and a half feet away. This is what the microphone sounds like when it's about two and a half feet away. Next, to check the plosives on this microphone, the Pink Panther pinches bumblebees. The Pink Panther punches bumblebees. Next, we're gonna try it with the foam cover from the Rode Procaster. This is what it sounds like with the cover from the Rode Procaster. This is what the proximity effect sounds like with the foam cover from the Rode Procaster. The Pink Panther punches bumblebees. And the cover is back off now. So now let's test what this microphone sounds like from the front, the side, and the rear of this microphone. So this is what it sounds like from the front of the microphone. This is what it sounds like on the side of the microphone. This is what it sounds like at the rear of the microphone. Next, we're gonna test the noise rejection of this microphone. I'm typing on a keyboard here that resembles the keyboard of an average laptop. I'm clicking a pen as I'm taking notes as I'm recording this podcast. And then I'm ripping paper as I got through the end of my notes and I decided that I wanna throw this paper away. And this is what it sounds like if I bump the microphone. And now we're gonna try this with and without a mic activator. So this is what the Rode Procaster sounds like without a mic activator and the gain is set to nine out of 10 on the SSL2 Plus audio interface. And here we are with the Rode Pod mic plugged into the cloud lifter back into the SSL2 Plus audio interface. We've reduced the gain from nine out of 10 to something like six and a half out of 10. And now we're gonna compare the Rode Pod mic to the Shure SM58. The Shure SM58 is a microphone that is priced identically to the Rode Pod mic. This is what the Rode Pod mic sounds like. This is what the Shure SM58 sounds like. This is what the Rode Pod mic sounds like. This is what the Shure SM58 sounds like. Next, we're gonna compare the Rode Pod mic to the Shure SM7B. This is what the Rode Pod mic sounds like. This is what the Shure SM7B sounds like. This is what the Rode Pod mic sounds like. This is what the Shure SM7B sounds like. And for good measure, we put the foam cover back on the Rode Pod mic and we put the optional foam cover on the Shure SM7B. This is what the Rode Pod mic sounds like. This is what the Shure SM7B sounds like. This is what the Rode Pod mic sounds like. This is what the Shure SM7B sounds like. Okay, so what do I like about this microphone? I love that Rode went out and they created this microphone. I think this thing hits a sweet spot in the market for $100 for a purpose-built podcasting microphone. 
I think the build quality is great on this. It's heavy, it's adjustable, it's built in all the right ways. I think this thing would survive just taking it off the stand, throwing it in your backpack, going to a friend's house, recording a podcast, throwing it back in your backpack, and heading home. I don't know if this thing will stand the test of time compared to the Shure SM58, which you can literally throw in the ocean and it'll still work, but I think the build quality on this microphone is great. Now comparing it to the Shure SM58, let's talk about looks for a second. Looks do matter to a large portion of users and audience. And there's something about a handheld dynamic microphone that just doesn't look like it belongs in the studio. The feng shui or the look or the feel of this microphone is absolutely perfect for a home podcast recorder. I think that they absolutely killed it in that regard. I also really like this microphone with its optional foam filter. I think that does help it with a, some of the things that maybe it falls a little bit short of. It gives it better plosive protection and it does help to reduce some of the frequencies that are a little bit more annoying than others. Now, what are the cons of this microphone? I'm not convinced that this microphone has a 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency response. To me, it sounds like there's a high pass filter constantly on it. With the frequencies that are built into this microphone when it's completely flat, like in this video, it makes it really susceptible to things like mouth noise. You can really hear a lot of the sounds inside somebody's mouth, and for a large portion of the audience, that can be super annoying. Also, on the other end of its frequency response, you do hear a lot of things like table taps. They come right through the stand into the microphone. I would have expected a little bit better shock mounting for a product that was built specifically for podcasters. Not all home podcasters who are interested in a $100 mic are going to go out and spend $100 on a boom stand. You're going to end up with a lot of these $10 mic stands, which is why we used it in this video. And I think that this microphone just doesn't have the shock protection that's required. Now with the frequency response of this microphone as well, it does sound great. You do get acclimated to it and it does sound nice and clean and crisp and all of that. But then when you compare it to the Shure SM58, you realize what it's missing. It's missing that the rest of the frequency response. The Shure SM58 does just sound more full than the Rode Pod mic. Now, a lot of people, when this microphone came out, they said it's a Shure SM7B killer. It's not even close. There's people on YouTube that say, if you put this foam filter on this microphone, that it sounds exactly like the Shure SM7B. I don't think so. The Shure SM7B is a completely different class of microphone. That being said, there is a very, very strong argument for the value proposition of this microphone. Even though it doesn't compare directly, the price, you can buy four of these microphones for one of those. You slap a couple of foam filters on and you do get pretty close. So that's the value proposition that a lot of people are gonna make with this microphone. Do I buy one good microphone? or do I buy four okay microphones? I'm not in the habit of recommending microphones less than $100 to friends who ask about it, so I do think that this is a high quality, high value microphone. It's not the Shure SM7B, but when you compare it to something like the 58, you really just making the choice, what, do I want a better looking microphone, or do I want a better sounding microphone? I think that's the coin toss, and people are gonna vote with their dollars as to which one they prefer. I think the 58 sounds better. I think the pod mic looks better. So speaking of price, price will go up and down. We all know that price changes over time. So if you want current pricing, we do have links in the description below, as well as current specs. If you have any questions about this microphone, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.